rolling. Hello, everybody. Wave. All right. We are live there. Mm-hmm. Pistons ought to be drafting in the next hour or so. Yeah, we can talk about that a little bit. I don't know who they're going to draft. But... <laughs> All right. Here we go. Stand by. First three picks, I guess, are already in when I get Talk Recorded live. This is State Representative Bob Kozowski, and you are listening to Garden City Community Chat. Now here's your host, Carrie. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of GC Community Chat. I'm your host, Kerry, and joining me tonight is Wayne County Commissioner Richard LeBlanc, Dr. Tom Iwinski, and Mike Jones. This show is dedicated to the residents and businesses of Garden City, as well as the surrounding communities. Remember, we're working hard to promote our community and yours. Well, hello again, and welcome back to another episode of GC Community Chat. You're listening to show number 251. For June 25th, 2015, this is the podcast where we promote news you can use from our community to yours. I'm your host, Carrie, and joining us tonight, or me tonight, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, Wayne County Commissioner is going to be calling in Richard LeBlanc. He's supposed to be calling in. He's up north, actually, so uh, he said he'd be calling in. Also joining me is our favorite weather guy, Doppler Tom Iwinski. Tom, how you doing? I'm doing great tonight. How are you guys doing? Awesome. Can't complain. And former city councilman and longtime resident, Garden City resident, uh, Mr. Mike Jones. Mike, how are you? I'm tired, Gary, but I'm doing great. Yeah, yeah. You worked the ball game today, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a heartbreaker. We can talk about that a little later, too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We have a lot to get to tonight. It's the last Thursday of the month, so that means our good friend Senator David Kinesic will be here. We have several topics to talk with uh, the senator about, including the unanimous vote of his service dog bill, number 298, out of the Senate, and also three bills that will, uh, have been introduced to provide a comprehensive solution to this issue that we'll discuss. And we are just getting started. Dr. Tom uh, will be here shortly with the latest weather and weekend forecast. Joy and Holly have their two-minute gardening tips. Tonight's topic, growing melons and squash. So if you're interested in that, you want to stick around for that. Melons and squash. Yes, mm. yes, love it. We'll see what's new in the county with Richard if he calls in. And a little later, uh, we'll open it up for comments from our panel here tonight on some topics that Senator Kanisik posted today on his Facebook, including some Supreme Court rulings and much more. And then, as always, Mike will have some important community event announcements for us. So why not sit back, grab your favorite beverage, and hang with us for the next 60 minutes or so? Should be a good one. You know, it's very easy to join us uh, here tonight. Uh, all you have to do is uh, give us a call, uh, 1-724-444-7444, and enter the call ID 82757, followed by the pound. Or you can join us in our chat room, like uh, we have a few in there tonight. Uh, by going to TalkShoe.com and search for call ID 82757. That takes you right to our main show page where you'll click on the large Join In button. A window opens, you sign in as a guest, and that's all there is to it. Once you're in the chat room, you can type your questions and comments at the bottom of the page, and you'll find our phone number and show ID there as well. And also, you can text your questions to us at 734-788-9319. And if that wasn't enough, Mike, we yes. are also in iTunes. Just search for GC oh, Community Chat. Yes. <laughs> Just one more social media that I'm not up on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Audio from tonight's show will be posted on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash gcchat as soon as it's made available, usually about 30 minutes or so after we sign off tonight. We are also doing a live unedited video of tonight's show, so you can put a face with the voice, and that will be available sometime tomorrow on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash community chat show. Please look for that, and while you're there, why not subscribe to our channel? That way you'll be notified when we post future shows. Before we get into the weather, I just wanted to mention that if you would like to be a guest on our show, 
We would love to have you. We still have plenty of dates available. Maybe uh, you own a business or belong to an organization. You'd like to share your information with us and the surrounding communities. Then just send us an email at gccommunitychat at gmail.com. And we'll shoot you some available dates, and that's all there is to it. So contact us today. Now, uh, a couple of guests that we will be uh, getting on very soon, and uh, one of them is city manager slash police chief uh, Bob Murray. He wants to come on and talk about the upcoming police and fire millage renewal. And also we had uh, to shoot the Yankee Air Museum uh, some dates. They want to come on the show, so that would be interesting. Sure. Confirmed for November 12th show is Mr. John Quinn. He will be this year's guest speaker at the Veterans Day ceremony, and he's agreed to uh, stay an extra day and uh, come on our show. He has quite a story to tell. He was born with cerebral palsy and unable to walk until age four. John kept his condition secret in order to join the United States Navy. In fact, he maintained that secret during his entire 20-year military career. No one knew he had cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. His book is called Someone Like Me, tells the details of his incredible story, and he'll be here November 12th to share those details with us. And by the way, he is from Garden City, but now lives in Arizona. So if any of you are interested in coming on the show, contact us at gccommunitychat at gmail.com. Okay, coming up now is Doppler Tom and the weather, then we'll get to Holly and Joey. And then we'll get to our topics for tonight, uh, and hopefully the senator will be here. So let's get Tom in here. Okay, let's do a check on weather with Doppler Tom. Let's see what he has in store for the rest of this week and the weekend coming up. Tom, take it away. Hey, Tom. Thought we'd have a little rain today, but uh, actually it stayed, what, south, huh? Yeah, a lot of the rain did go south, but we've seen a little bit of light rain throughout the day, but nothing mm -hmm. to really impact anything if you were out and about. But um been very busy in the weather department this week. We've dealt with a pretty significant severe weather event um, this week across Michigan, and uh, we'll get into that pretty quickly. But we'll talk about the weather that we're now going to be seeing the next week or so as we get into the rest of tonight. So the clouds will start to finally break. Uh, we're, we're seeing that right now out there in the evening hours. And they'll continue to break out there. And we'll get a little bit on the cool side tonight in the upper 50s uh, for overnight lows. And then as we get into tomorrow, we'll see a little bit more sunshine than we did today. So there will be a little bit of clouds out there as well. And temperatures will be in the upper 70s. And that's going to kind of be the... Uh, the condition as we get into all of next week, a big cool down is happening all across Michigan as wow. a big uh, dip in the jet stream goes over the Great Lakes. So if um, you're really looking forward to a big heat wave or if you're not, it's not, it's not really coming. I know summer just started, but uh, we're kind of not looking like we're going to be in a summer pattern. So at least you'll be saving some money on the AC. So yeah, I'm not looking for but, a heat um, wave, but I'm sure Richard is. Oh. <laughs> oh, I know. So that, he's not here, so I'm good. He's on the phone. <laughs> Oh, he is? Oh, God, he's probably going to yell at me. <laughs> but as yes, we get he is. <laughs> <laughs> but as we get into the weekend, it is going to look like it's going to be a little bit of a cloudy, rainy weekend. I don't think it's going to be a complete washout the whole weekend, but as we get into Saturday and into Sunday, there is going to be some rain at times throughout much of today, and there will be some dry pockets, but the majority of the time will be a little bit on the rainy side and cool as well. It will be probably in the low 70s all week. And as we get into next week, we'll be seeing again this pattern shift as we're in a, in that dip of the jet stream, like I said. These on and off little disturbances um, of rain. Probably not severe weather or big thunderstorms, but on and off rain again all of next week looks very likely. And those temperatures will be on the cool side for this time of year in the um, mid to upper 70s. So a little bit of a cool down, but uh, and a little bit of rainy at times. But overall, Nothing that we dealt with that we have been dealing with early in the week on Monday and Tuesday. All across the state of Michigan, we've seen about five tornadoes. And I know you're probably saying that, oh, five tornadoes, that's not a whole lot of tornadoes. Uh, <laughs> Michigan averages about eight or nine for the entire year. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, pretty uh, significant event that we had mm -hmm. early Monday and early Tuesday. The first round Oklahoma moved through during the day. afternoon hours, and it was a decaying 
storm system that moved across much of the Midwest. And as as by the time it got to Michigan, especially on the eastern side of Michigan around the metro Detroit, it pretty much weakened into a, just a batch of rain that moved through during the afternoon and the evening hours. But before it got here, it was pretty strong in the middle part of the state where they seen a pretty um, strong tornado in Portland, Michigan. It was an EF1 tornado with wind um, over 100 miles per hour, and it was a brief tornado. And the only downside with this tornado is because it wasn't really detectable on radar, and they didn't issue a tornado warning on it. So it was a little bit caught off guard in the uh, weather service because of the circulation developed so quickly, it was between radar scans. And by the time the new radar scan came in, it was already gone. So that's how fast that tornado was on the ground. It was on the ground just just for about five minutes. So. Wow. And that, that caused a lot of damage. And that second round moved in during the overnight hours between 10 and 3 a.m. across much of uh, Michigan. And it was a very loud and stormy night, and probably a whole lot of people didn't get a whole lot of sleep that night. It was a very loud night. And uh, luckily, we didn't see any tornadoes in Wayne County, but uh, we did see a lot of uh, strong winds and a little bit of flooding out there as well. But um, the tornadoes that hit were a lot of them were north of the cities. We've seen a lot of in Saginaw, Tuscaloosa, Sanilac, and St. Clair counties. It, they range between EF2s and EF0s, which are pretty powerful uh, tornadoes for this region. And there was one that occurred um, in Washtenaw County, and that was an EF one that occurred during the overnight hours. It occurred at 1.30 in the morning. So that is a very bad time for a tornado to occur because yeah. people are sleeping. I mean, yeah. obviously I wasn't sleeping. I was tracking this all night. But <laughs> the people that they, they um, kicked so caught off guard, luckily there was any, there was no fatalities across the entire state. So that's some great news. But there was a few injuries here and there. But I just wanted to briefly mention that because that's a very big event that Michigan just went through. Mm. And I don't see any more severe weather to deal with, so that's some great news. But the other big story that's going on across the United States is a big pattern shift. Like I said, it's going to be affecting much of the United States, including us. The southeast has been dealing with the heat wave and um, all the storminess across the eastern United States. That is now going to change, and it's going to start cooling down across the eastern United States. But the, but the bad news is, is that the western part of the state is going to get, again, very hot, and it's going to stay hot and dry, and probably um, our heat wave is going to start developing across the, the western United States, and that is absolutely what they do not need. And it's now starting to get pretty bad out there because all that heat is um, starting to uh, spark a lot of wildfires across yeah. that state because there's continue to be in such a significant drought out there from um, all the way from Alaska, Washington, Oregon, California, and all the way down to Arizona. They're seeing all sorts of wildfires starting to develop, and there is no good news for the western United States. So I just wanted to briefly mention that. But the um, but that's the main story that's going on across the United States as we get into next week. Other good news, the, the tropics are pretty quiet for this time of the year, so that's some other good news. But if you want to keep tuned to this local weather information, um, just go to my website, DopplerSoundsWeather.com, and um, it will keep you safe because I was tracking all that severe weather on early Tuesday morning up until 5 a.m. I did not get a week of sleep because yeah. you never know, Carrie. You were busy. And you got an honorable mention on Channel 7. Did you? Oh, this. I don't yeah. remember this. I don't remember that. Doppler Tom from Garden City, Michigan. <laughs> That's right. That's what they said on the news. From, oh, well, I, I must have been from, sleeping by then. <laughs> hey, you could have put a plug in for GC Community Chat, weatherman for Garden City Community Chat. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? Yeah. I agree. Yes. Hey. So Wayne County Commissioner Richard LeBlanc is joining us by phone. How are you doing, Richard? Yes, sir. Carrie, I'm all right today. How's everything? Ah, uh, we're doing good. Can't complain. Mike's here, good. and good. I believe the senator just arrived. Yes, there he good. is. Good. He just got in studio. Things are always better when Mike and the senator are there. <laughs> Why, thank you, Richard. <laughs> I feel very welcome. <laughs> right. Well, I am down hey. with Tom. I forgot. Okay. Yeah. Okay, there hey, we go. Tom, what's the chances of us getting the ball game in on Saturday afternoon? Yeah. Uh, you know, that's another tricky forecast. Uh -huh. They'll probably get going, but, it's, again, I do see some rain throughout much of the day. So there'll probably be some rain delays, but they probably will get it in eventually. It's just going to be a struggle. Yeah, it looks like Saturday's probably the wettest day of the weekend, eh? Absolutely. 
All right. Well, that's not good news for the events that are going on this weekend, that's for sure. No. All right. I want to uh, remind all residents that the next regular city council meeting will be held on June 29th. Monday. At 7 p.m. in the council chambers located at 6000 Middle Belt Road. They urge all residents to attend. All right. Let's get right to it. He needs no introduction. He is a very close friend of the show. Should I get the wheelbarrow? <laughs> and, and we enjoy having him on every month and whenever possible. One of the busiest guys in Lansing, Senator David Kanisic. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? We're good. We're good. Richard's on the phone. Say hi, Richard. <laughs> He's doing dishes. So? I was muted. I was muted. Hi, Richard. <laughs> hi, hi, Richard. Hi, Richard. <laughs> So, uh, Senator. All right, I'm going back to mute until you call me again. All right, you're going to be up. So, any any comments? Just m b chime in. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Senator. What's up, man? Congrats on the unanimous vote out of the Senate on Bill 298. Oh yeah, that's a good one. A bipartisan bill. You worked uh, long and hard on. Two years. The service dogs bill. Yes, sir. That's yes, what we're sir. talking about. Yes, sir. So let's let's talk about uh, about the uh, about it briefly. Yeah, so where do so, we go from now? Well, so the the bill package that um, I worked with three other individuals to put together. You've got Senator Margaret O'Brien from Portage, mm -hmm. you've got uh, Representative David Rutledge from Superior Township, and you've got Representative Tom Barrett from Potterville. Yeah, I was um, going to mention there's three other bills that are kind of associated with this. Correct, correct. And so what we have is two bills in the House, two bills in the Senate, mm -hmm. both. Uh, or actually, all four bills have cleared their respective chambers. Okay. So the two Senate bills have been voted out unanimously from uh, the Senate. The two House bills have been voted out of the House. Mm -hmm. Now they've got to do a quick swap so that the House can approve the Senate bills and the Senate can approve the House bills. Jeez, what a dance, eh? Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then once that happens, uh, which I, I do expect it to, uh -huh. uh, they'll go to the governor for his signature. And so, Sweet. you know, the thing that I'm trying to, to get going right now, the challenge is going to be the House of Representatives because the House is currently on recess for the summer. Uh, the Senate is not. And so the Senate will be back in session next week. The House will not be. So I spoke to the committee chair in the House this last week. I said, uh, if we know for a fact that you're going to be in town for a day or two or three, can yeah. you hold a quick hearing Get them voted out of committee, and then we can get them voted out because the house yeah, is again moving. The house is going to be the 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 place where we have to to wait because they're simply out of session. Right. If we can get those two Senate bills out of the house, uh, we've got all summer to take up the House bills in the Senate, and I expect that to happen as well. So, you know, if 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 we can get the timing down right, yeah. If we can get the timing down right, these could be on the governor's desk by the end of July. Mm. Which I think would be in great a, in a perfect world. <laughs> in a perfect world. <laughs> well, uh, well, that's what you're shooting for, that, anyway. The oh, house, yeah. it's possible, deserves to be on recess. They've accomplished all of their business, haven't they? Well, there you <laughs> have it. That's another fight for another. Yeah, let's not even <laughs> yeah. talk about. Let's not even go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, let's talk about these three other bills. There's Bill 299 that was introduced by uh, uh, Margaret O'Brien, right, out of Portage. That's the licensing fees it exempts. Yep. So, so currently, individuals who have service dogs, uh, you know, they're exempt from paying licensing fees for those dogs, and this just simply amends that language to include uh, the veterans uh, mm -hmm. who are going to be able to use the service dogs for PTS. Uh, and traumatic brain injury. And so, you, you know, it's just a good example where you, know, you may want to do one thing in the law. You may want to make one change uh, related to, you know, vegetable service dogs, but service dogs are mentioned in four different places in the law, so yeah, you have yeah. to make four different bills to change all four different okay, sections. I got you. Yeah. So, so, so that's O'Brien's bill, yeah. She, okay. she does the licensing fees. So now Tom uh, Barrett's bill, 4521, that has to do with... Uh, the standardized voluntary ID card, right? Dog so, so that. of all the bills, this is the only bill that was 100% written from scratch. Okay. All the other bills amend the current language. This bill okay. uh, goes in and through the Department of Civil Rights, veterans are going to be able to apply for the dog tag uh, for them, uh, their their dog doyer, mm -hmm. uh, a standardized identification card, so that when asked. Uh, or are confronted about the issue, they can present the identification card. The best thing and are. a standardized vest for the dog as well, too. That's so, cool. you know, I, I, uh, 
I hope that they pick a cool looking vest. Yeah, yeah, know? that would be kind of neat. Or, know, or simply red, white, and blue with stars and stripes. Well, on and, and they've got some out there that <laughs> are like that. Sweet. Yeah, they got Camel some out there like that. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's going to be up to the state. Uh, I certainly will make a couple suggestions, but at the end of the day, that decision is going to be left to the Department of Civil Rights. And then, will the veteran have to pay for those? Won't have to pay for a thing. That's all exempt. Too. Won't have to pay for a thing, and so wow. they're going to be able to apply. And we wrote it into language that the state's going to pick up the tab, that's so cool. uh, veterans won't have to pay a penny for it. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. And then the third one is House Bill 4527, introduced yeah. by David Rutledge, which this is important. This oh, is yeah. important one. Increases the penalties on those who falsely claim they need a service dog mm -hmm. or animal. So you'll get some folks who might want to, you know, bring the dog around, acting like they need it when they really don't. Right. Uh, the dogs yeah, who are then, you know, not trained or what have you, they could cause a ruckus, they could destroy property, the whole nine. <laughs> Uh, at that point, the business has legal standing to ask them to, re to be removed, and, and there could be a subsequent investigation. Mm -hmm. The current law says that uh, if you're found to be impersonating someone who needs a service dog, the fine is $10. Mm. Are Ten dollars. Ten dollars. That's the current law. Oh my God! And so what we did is, is we took this and we brought it into alignment with any other sort of misdemeanor infraction. Right. So you you can get one of three options. Well, actually, let me say this. If we were to make it standardized, it would say up to 90 days in jail mm -hmm. or up to $500, uh, I believe, in, in payment. Uh, what we added, because or we both. think, or yeah, it could be, yeah, it could be either. What we added, uh, because we think, one, uh, it's, you know, if people are are not doing that or are, are, are falsely claiming it, I do think that's bad. Do I think they should spend 90 days in jail? Probably not. But what we added was 30 hours of community service. Okay. And we thought that that'd be yeah, that'd be a that, good way to, to actually give back to the community yeah, after you. I can see that. After you, you know, make a pretty big, uh, you know, fraudulent kind of mistake. So, right. so that's yeah, that's Rutledge's bill. Okay, yeah. that's cool. So, all right, let's uh, let's check with Richard. Richard, you there? Give him a second to get back to his phone. Richard, I'm here. Okay, yeah, I'm here. Hang, hang up the dish towel. All right, we're gonna we're gonna check with you on, on on the county. What's new with the county? And then we're gonna get back to Dave. We're gonna open it up for some comments here on a few topics. What's I new? I see. What, what do you All got? All right. So there's there's a couple of things that are notable at the county level, of course, and probably the one that most people would be curious about is the whole issue of declaration involving a financial emergency. Yeah. Right. And as we talked about, the executive asked the state to conduct a review. Mm -hmm. Within uh, 23 and a half hours, the state agreed to do that. Yeah, that was quick, wasn't it? It was. And then <laughs> I'll tell you that as of this evening, we received a letter from the state indicating that they have found a number of, you know, I think they're called like contributing factors or qualifying factors factor, something like that, that suggests that, uh, you know, we're right for the picking, so to speak. So yeah. um, it wasn't it wasn't an all-inclusive document. I'm not really even sure why the state sent it to us, mm -hmm. but, but what it does indicate is what we all really already know, and that is that the acknowledgement of a financial, the existence of a financial emergency is forthcoming. There's no doubt about that. It's going to happen. Yeah. So, and as we talked about last week, the legislative body, the county commission, will be required to select from one of four options as to how to address it. The executive has made it known from the first day he wishes for the county commission to choose the consent agreement option. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, let's see, today's Thursday, Tuesday, I had a meeting with a couple of members of the executive team who told me that they are soliciting input from the commission chairman, from members of the commission, mm -hmm. so that they can finalize the drafting of a consent agreement, which is interesting because they've had one, I suspect, all along. Mm -hmm. And really the issue involves the things that everybody's aware of, mm -hmm. legacy costs, whether it's pension, retirement health care, or um, other similar things that are in the current collective bargaining agreements. So I don't know how soon, but I'm going to say that my prediction is that by mid-August, the commission will have finalized its work 
because the state will finalize its work very quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're going to be heading down a path. Not sure which one. I'm fairly confident it may be a consent agreement, but, you know, that requires a majority vote of the commission. So we'll see. I mean, yeah. it's, it's moving very quickly. Yeah. Has the commission been presented with a budget yet? Nope. Wow. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I say. Wow. Yeah, What? What's? I mean, what's going on there? He has until when? Was, September? Um, a month and a half ago. Oh, wow. Well, to present it. Okay. But, you know, it wasn't presented. So <laughs> what are you going to do? What's, yeah. your, what's your fiscal year? <laughs> Our fiscal year is September 30. So okay. we have time to get it done. But Yeah, but geez. You know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of having the process rushed. Right, exactly. It may be, though, that the consent agreement speaks to some of it, and the budget mm -hmm. speaks to some of the consent agreement. So who knows? Yeah, true. David, have you? I think it's uh, going to be an unpretty year. Are you hearing anything in Lansing uh, about this uh, in Detroit? Uh, on the county stuff, no, not yet. Nothing. Huh? Not yet. I mean, like like the commissioner said, you know, the the executive sort of put the process in place for you know folks it to look at within twenty three the hours they got yeah, back. Yeah, and, and so <laughs> that's quick. that's where we're at. That's where we're at. Okay. The other thing about the county, and, and certainly I'll take questions on what I just talked about, but the other interesting issue that's developed this week is that about a month and a half ago, the county commission chose to return an item to committee, which means they did not take action on it and they wanted further study. Uh oh. And the the action involved the, uh, I think it's Republic Waste at a uh, developing landfill mm. and for those techies and folks that also are interested uh, intimately in environmental issues yeah. what what the company is asking to do is to have a, a liner for the trash mm -hmm. that is one quarter um, less than the current county requirement I believe the county requirement is 80 mils they want to install a 60 mils which, again, for those of us who, who know measurement, mm. it's 20 thousandths of an inch thinner. It'll save the company a wow. million dollars, um, but there was not enough support to advance it. Mm. And so what uh, Commissioner Webb did, she's chair of the committee, she asked people to take a field trip. I declined, but others, uh, some of the others went on it, mm. and apparently now there, it appears as though there could be support to move forward with that. Hmm. And you it's know, thinner, well, better. I mean, just because it's going to save money. <laughs> well, yeah. And one of my colleagues made the observation: this is a nine billion dollar corporation. Yeah. And this will save them one million dollars. <laughs> we'll Our yeah. price is going to be dropped for everybody that uses it. Uh, right. You know, what are the long lasting effects? Yes. There's some I think questions. Would not be supportive, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, as far as county stuff, that's the latest. That's but the latest. there's always something new, and I expect that next week I'll have even more new stuff. Right. Well, I'd imagine. Yeah, it's going to probably yeah. get kind of busy down there. Indeed it is. All right, well, look, uh, I did want to um, hit some of these topics that the senator put on Facebook uh, uh -oh. today. You, uh, you posted that there were several political items. Uh, state and federal. Most level. notably, I spoke to the Garden City Rotary. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, I was going to bring that up, too. Yeah. Go ahead. You, Forget, well, no. You for, I, was, I, I, I just like making light of it in front you know, of the Supreme Court. What about the state today? Uh, uh, what not, was that? Not in my house. Yeah, not in my house. You, you, could, you could literally say that. You're drinking my beer. In my house. <laughs> yeah. From two Kwanians. <laughs> yes. And a free lunch. And a free yeah. lunch, right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so so got to go and speak to the Garden City Rotary. Actually, believe it or not, this is the first time I've ever spoken to Garden City Rotary. Seriously? In the past, uh, whenever we've been on recess, uh, because, you know, it meets uh, Thursdays at noon. Right. Uh, and the legislature's in session traditionally Thursdays at that time. Uh, I've always been invited to speak to Kiwanis. I have never right. once been invited to speak to the Rotary. I was today for the first time, and I really enjoyed it. And uh, I think that the folks there really enjoyed it as well because I've been asked to be back in November. 
And uh, so I'll be there. Just yeah. got to find time to go hang out with the. Uh, I, I heard the Kiwanis guys from across the room. You guys are all noisy over there. Yeah, they're yeah. rowdy. Singing yeah. and yelling. They're a rowdy group. And hooping and hollering. Yeah. 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 Rotary's a little bit more subdued, a little more mellow. Right. But mellow. They're good people. Sedate. Sedate. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't, don't bring me into this fight. <laughs> don't bring me into this fight. No, but Michelle uh, Michelle from uh, right. the GCBA, she, she's a Rotarian. Uh, she said you hit it out of the ballpark. They're real pleased today. Yeah, we had a good time. Okay, and then uh, let's move on to uh, some of this other political uh, activity. So let's uh, just uh, go down the line here. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, the Supreme Court just upheld uh, King versus Burwell by a 6-3 vote, ensuring the continuance of Obamacare. Yeah, big, this is this big is big win for Obama. This is uh, the second time that the Supreme Court uh, has has ruled in favor uh, of Obamacare or, or some aspect of it. Specifically, today's was. Uh, ruling on subsidies and whether or not federally provided subsidies are are legal or with, within the intent of the law uh, when it was written. And so, uh, whereas the last decision related to Obamacare was six three, mm -hmm. and if you're familiar with with the makeup of the court, we've got you know if four reliably liberal judges, mm -hmm. four reliably conservative judges, and then Justice Kennedy. Is kind of the swing vote, you know yeah. that that historically used to be uh, Justice. What's her name? Uh, oh, yeah. it's escaping me right now. Yeah. She, she's off the court now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah, gosh, it's, it's coming. I'm not gonna think. Of I know I can see her. But but yeah, I can't too. And Kinsberg. Get, no no no. I, no no yeah, no. Kinsberg. Kinsberg's reliably liberal. No no. Yeah yeah. <laughs> no, who was it? I can't remember. I think her name started with an S. Either yeah. way. Uh, and this vote was six to three with Kennedy and the the Chief Justice. Yeah. Uh, John Roberts, appointed by George W. Bush, ruling in favor of the subsidies. And not only did the Chief Justice rule uh, in favor, he actually delivered the uh, majority decision uh, from the bench. Yeah, you said, you so, said something about uh, although the legislature wasn't, or the Congress wasn't that specific, <laughs> he still thought that their intent was. Correct. It's, it's just, you know, it's interesting to me because uh, at this point, from a legal perspective, Obamacare is not going anywhere. Right, I was just going to say that. So it's just be and interesting to see. How many times are they going to rule on this? Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, whether or not this continues to be a part of the political discourse moving forward uh, from from both sides of the aisle. But but I'd imagine in many ways, you know, it, it should be put to rest. But it should, you know, be. some folks are going to continue to push it, and yeah, there's a lot of political. Yeah, there's a lot of political uh, reasons they, why they would do that, but. I mean, me personally, if I was them, this is just not the hill that I would die on anymore. No. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. 63 decision today. Uh, another major decision that the Supreme Court headed down was in relation to uh, housing discrimination and housing rights. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean, really, a, a quieter decision, but implications that were very significant. Uh, the Supreme Court only has two more days that they're going to be issuing opinions this year. So and we are still waiting on the opinion on marriage equality. Right. And so that is either going to happen tomorrow or Monday. You're guessing Monday, I think. I'm personally guessing Monday. The the lady who I know, uh, Dana Nessel, who is one of the uh, individuals who brought suit against the state of Michigan and whose case was... Uh, brought up by the, the United States Supreme Court, mm -hmm. she told me uh, in our last conversation that she was expecting the 29th. Okay. Uh, but who knows? It could be tomorrow. And, and I would fully expect that the Supreme Court's going to rule in favor of marriage equality. Uh, and and I, I was a betting man. It's going to be 6 to 3 or 7 to 2. It's, it's going to be a huge. It's going to huge. be huge. Really, really huge. You know, it was interesting to me. And, you know, folks know this is an issue that I'm passionate about in that, uh, you know, I just, I, I just don't get worked up over this. If people want to be happy and if they love each other, let them let them be happy. Let them love right, each other. Right. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't it, affect anybody adversely. Yeah. No. No. And, it really doesn't. And so I, I thought to myself the other day, what if it doesn't go the way that I expect it to? Like, like what if? And could you imagine waiting your whole life, twenty years? 30 years, 40 years, 50, 60, 70 years, some of these folks, uh, and this is the decision. You know, this you know. is going to be the decision that imagine? says whether or not you are equal in the eyes of the government. What if they came back and said no? Now, if that I, does I, pass, I, is I mean, that going to entitle them to benefits and everything that goes along in a marriage? I mean, so, so here's, here's how does that work? The, the legal, when, when the Supreme Court grants 
uh, for individuals to come present on a case before them. Yeah. They give you a specific question that you must at, a, answer. Mm -hmm. The questions, the two questions that were asked uh, in related to gay marriage, uh, marriage equality rather, was uh, does the 14th Amendment provide for the recognition of marriage between members of the same sex? Question number one. And, and the people that were petitioning, they had, they were given, I think, an hour and a half to present their case on that question. Okay. And the second question was, does the 14th Amendment, which is equal protection, the equal protection, right, right. does the 14th Amendment require that states recognize marriages between same sex couples performed in other states if that couple were to move to their state? So even oh, though, okay. even though a state may not recognize Yeah, because there's it, several states that do recognize right. them. Even if a state didn't, uh, that if a state did and if exactly. that couple moved, does the, the state then have to recognize yeah, what happens in another state? Problem. So those are the only two questions. What wow. I think you're going to see as a result of that, though, if the Supreme Court rules that the 14th Amendment protects marriage between same-sex couples, I would assume that it also protects the benefits and all the legal standings that come with you would think being so. a married couple in this country. Yeah. But if, 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 that, if that's taken away... Uh, I would imagine that that could be the next fight. Okay, you're legally allowed to marry, but you're, you're not going to get the benefit. So, so that could be. So the fight is going to shift. The fight is not over. Make no mistake about it. And 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 it's hopefully, the, shift. hopefully the court's going to see it that way too. You know, <laughs> if we don't grant them the benefits, we're going to be right back here again right. fighting that fight. And and they it's will. Not, be. It's not just benefits too. It's the, the whole adoption issue. Oh yeah. But well, and, and so I mean that—that's why changing the birth certificate. Yeah, that's. I, I think too. that's why you have a, a rush, a rush right now, to pass some of those things, trying to get ahead of the Supreme Court case. Because again, if it if it recognizes legal marriage, I mean everything that comes with that is going to come with it, exactly. including like Mike said, the adoption piece. Yeah. And and something that's interesting. This just just came on my radar from one of my constituents. She's a friend of mine. Uh, and it may sound silly, but it's interesting when you think about it. Uh, only in only nine states across the country mm -hmm. can a man take his wife's last name if they get married. Really? So if a woman if a woman wants to change her last name legally, if she gets married. All she does is change it on a marriage certificate, and legally her name has been changed. Yeah. Uh, if a man had wanted to change his name uh, by marrying his wife, he would have to go through the lengthy and costly legal name change process. Why would a man want to? change his name to his wife's name. That's really. not my decision to make. No, I mean, but I mean, why? Some, I mean, some, some men just do it. I mean, I mean right? I, I, yeah. I've never heard of it. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. You have? Well, the, the reason it came back up into... I'm just asking. Yeah, the reason it came back up into conversation recently, it, it is certainly rare, Kerry, don't get me wrong. It's right, certainly it's rare. It's going to be rare, yeah. Certainly rare. Uh, but Dan Mulhern. There you, oh yeah, there you go, there you go. Did you just Google that? Name. Well, Dan Mulhern is Jennifer Granholm's no, husband. Oh, oh, right, right. Yeah, Jennifer Granholm's Yeah, husband. you're right, you're right. And so, you know, for whatever reason, and it, it came back up in conversation recently, uh, the actress Zoe Saldana, who was in Avatar. Okay. She got married, and her husband said, you know, I want to take her last name. It's just what he wanted. Okay. So he took her last name, but he, but they didn't I mean, have the it legal should be up to, to them, it. their choice. It, right. It, it's no sweat off me. So we're going to, we're going to do a bill that says <laughs> that, you know, in Michigan, if you're a man, if for whatever reason, I don't really care. If you want to take yeah. your wife's last name, you could do it on the marriage certificate. Yeah, it's going to be interesting too, because when the certificates or if marriage is, is approved in the country, what that process looks like for same sex couples. Yeah. If you want to take your partner's last name. And what was this I heard where if they, if they do get married, they got to be married by a religious a church, so not like a mayor or something like so that. So that that's a bill right now that someone in Lansing is trying to push. Yeah, uh, and it's, it's to say that religious organizations that don't want to perform the marriage, if they don't want to, they don't have to. So okay. it's like a religious freedom argument is what they're trying to make. Okay. Uh, and again, I think it's folks just trying to get ahead of yeah. what they know is going to come down the pipes tomorrow or yeah. or Monday. That so just, that might die though. Yeah. Well, it's going to be interesting for sure. It's going to be very interesting. I mean, really, when you think about it from from a historical perspective, from a yes, a civil rights perspective, uh, it's, it is a significant decision, a yeah. significant decision uh, for the for the entire country. So, you know, a lot of us are looking forward to it. What else you got? What else did I talk about today? The late somebody in the chat room said the later got divorced and it changed it back. Okay. A little louder. I don't know what that means. Okay. 
Um, oh, here's another big one. The chairman of the Michigan Democratic Party is resigning today well, to run is, for Congress. That's it is Lon eight, Johnson. It is 8.43, so he's probably resigned about uh, three hours and 43 minutes ago. So uh, who's up for that? Who's next in line? You know, there's been some media reports out there uh, that a state representative named Brandon Dillon from Grand Rapids, oh, I did hear that, that. that he is the front runner to replace him. Uh, another name that's been floated is a woman named Lavora Barnes, who is a deputy county clerk uh, in Oakland County. Okay. Uh, and so uh, the the media reports that I'm reading would suggest that Brandon and Lavora are just, you know, they're getting together between themselves to try and figure out what the best course of action is. I think everybody at the end of the day wants a smooth transition. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was it was a it was a heavy day politically in how, Michigan. It, how uh, can you can you be state? Democratic chairman and representative? Uh, there is precedent for that. Um, Sandy Levin did it a couple decades ago. Okay. Uh, if that were to be the case, I don't know what Representative Dillon's final decision would be. Uh, he could stay on as both, but if I was a betting man and, and knowing Brandon very well as I do, uh, he is somebody who when he gets into something, he gets into it. And I think that he would probably want to be full time in the the chair's role, so that it wouldn't distract him from from that. Just what we need is one more open Democratic seat. To, we, we have well, especially Grand Rapids, them. especially Grand yeah. Rapids, yeah. you know, because yeah. you know Grand Rapids historically is sort of a, a conservative stronghold. Yeah, it has a Republican uh, uh, senator. But both of the representatives who represent Grand Rapids, the entire city, are both Democrats. Yeah, uh, so, you know, for, for a variety of reasons, that's the case. But yeah. that's the case. So yeah. it's interesting. So how does how that go? Do they Is it like seniority or something when they choose a Democratic uh, chairman? Well, so it's, I mean, it's, it's by a vote of the membership. Could you? Could you be chairman? Yeah. I mean, you know, if... If, if your name was thrown in there? Or, well, I or, certainly hope it's not. Uh, <laughs> I, that, <laughs> That is not a job. So, so, so do we. You got enough yeah, on your plate. That's not a job I'm interested in. Not not at this juncture. No, no. no probably, <laughs> probably, yeah. Probably. I mean, I guess you can never say never. But uh, so the, the, that motion. <laughs> the way the way it's going to work is that uh, the the executive board is going to make a, a replacement decision. I believe it's July 11th. Uh, so you know, pretty quickly, we're going to have uh, the turnaround. We're going to know who the next chair is. Okay. I just chance 48 is in the chat room and said. Uh, my friend did that. His wife had MS and was an only child, I guess, taken. To oh, college, yeah. There you go. Uh, here in Ohio, and it was a pain for him to do it. Mm -hmm. it took months to get everything done. That, that's what I was saying. You know, for guys that want to do it, Thanks, they, they can, but they have to go through the lengthy and expensive legal name change process. Whereas, Women who get married in every state, all you have to do yeah, is write the new deal. name, write the new name on the marriage certificate, and yeah. it's done. Done deal. So you know, just, that is odd. Yeah. Just let it happen. Yeah. Let it happen. That's, and but that's, I mean, he brings that's up a, a good, good point. Example, yeah. Well, I, I don't know if Chase is a, a he or a she, but you chance. know, bring chance, chance. Pardon me, chance a he or she, but brings a good point. You know, some sometimes there may be a scenario where uh, the woman is is the last uh, member of that bloodline, and they want the last name to continue and. Mm -hmm. Off they go. So that's, that's yeah. a good, good example. Very good, very good. Good example. Thank you, Chance. Um, Richard, did you want to comment on the uh, on the Obamacare uh, being passed and okayed, or did you want to chime in on that? I probably shouldn't. I oh. call it LeBlanc care. <laughs> you don't want to, I, huh? I, I probably shouldn't. I wouldn't have anything good to say. There it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Okie dokie. What about Lon? Uh, uh, quitting. Any any comment on that? Yeah, I can tell you that Lon's ascension to become a candidate for that role in the first place occurred on a pontoon that I own in the middle of Houghton Lake. <laughs> You're kidding? And, no, I'm not kidding. Wow. That's where it was. That's where it was hatched. And uh, you know, Congressman Benicek, I think, is a very formidable candidate. He does have one notable flaw within his uh, history, and that is that he pledged to serve three terms only and no more. Ah. And now he's going for election for the fourth term, and I would suspect that the Democrats will hammer the heck out of that. And Lon has been a candidate in northern Michigan in the past. He's a property owner in Kalkaska. His family has, uh, you know, there's, there's heritage mm -hmm. in northern Michigan. It's going to be a, a heavy lift, but I suspect that they've they've done their homework and they believe that it's attainable. So, and you know, 
And some gains were made during his leadership. And, um, well, uh, shifting gears, my preference, of course, uh, for the party leader would be Brando, Brandon Dillon. Okay. And he is a firecracker. <laughs> and you talk about a guy that knows how to get press coverage, knows how to raise money. Knows how to knows work the media. Knows how to be a good Democrat. That's Brando. Yeah, okay. Well, they may need that, you know. What do you what do you I think? I was a little bit surprised when I heard his name floated. Um, a, a, a secret little uh, something told me, and <laughs> so I made a couple of phone calls. And uh, usually, when you contact a big shot like that, it might take an hour or two to get back with you. But I pushed send, and my phone rang. Wow! And it was like, where did you hear this? So well, they knew it was another big shot. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So okay, so who would Bland be going uh, up against in, in uh, for Congress? It's Congressman Benichek. Okay, Benichek. He is, yeah, he is the current congressman, three term. And what do you think? It's going to be going to be tough, tough road campaign. I mean, I think what Lon has going for him that other candidates uh, haven't when they challenged Congressman Benichek as the past, in the past is, uh, I mean, he has. Uh, the tremendous capacity to fundraise, okay. to bring the resources in that he needs to, to, to paint uh, Congressman Benishek in, in the unfavorable light that will be necessary to win that race. But, you know, Lon is a, he's a, good, he's a good candidate. He is uh, an incredibly hard worker. Formidable. I knocked doors for him when he ran for state representative back in 2012. Okay. And right. uh, he was a real workhorse. Uh, and so he's going to have the work ethic. He's going to have the discipline. He's going to have the resources. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, he, this will be the greatest challenge to, to Congressman Benishek that he has had yet. Uh, yeah, I agree. And Lon's wife is a political fundraiser by, by uh, profession, working oh. for Obama. Works for President and Obama. Oh, wow. So, yeah, wow. There's, there's some pretty big horsepower there. Yeah, yeah, sounds like it. Well, we wish him luck, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, let's talk about our good buddy Virgil Smith. Came down today, three felony counts. Again. You're going mute again? Yeah, I want to go mute again, too. <laughs> well, my buddy Virgil. It, it's in the news. Yep. Um, let yep. me ask you this. Would it be wise for him to step down as senator? Uh, can he still be senator with three felony convictions pending over his head? Yeah, there's there's nothing I mean, from he's a, not convicted. Yeah, there, I mean, even if he was convicted, there's there's nothing from a legal standpoint that would prevent him from serving. Okay. Uh, if he had a felony conviction, um, knowing that the case is going to trial, I mean that that's going to be a decision that that Senator Smith has to make. Yeah. A lot of folks have said to me. Uh, that they feel very strongly about the issue and, and they wish the outcome had been different from the legislative perspective. Right. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll say very confidently that to date, the legislature has done absolutely everything it can uh, as it relates to, to Senator Smith. Um, he, he was stripped of his committee assignments. He was stripped of his leadership positions. Uh, the folks that come to me and say, well, he needs to be kicked out, uh, the the reality is is that that's not a feasible option right now. And and Hold if on, you forgot something, Senator. I'm sorry. Continue, Mr. LeBlanc. He was stripped when the incident occurred. Right. Yeah, when it occurred. Right. right. Yeah. Right, right when it occurred. Right. No, no, no. I mean, he was stripped naked. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Do you have a Bud Light? Honestly. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. no, now we're going to bring up the uh, where did he keep the spare clip? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> extra bullets. No, but I was pretty impressed by that. You need to you need to let the judicial system and that's and that's the, run that's course, the case right? because, because folks are saying that the Senate needs to take action. What have you? If the Senate wanted to take action, and there have been zero conversations so far about that mm -hmm. happening, mm -hmm. uh, there would have to be a resolution. There would have to be a hearing. There would have yeah, to be it'd be a big deal. Uh, witnesses, and, and so they the Senate would then be in interfering with an actual judicial proceeding. True. Uh, and so right. the, the, the plan right now uh, in, in the minds of many, I think, is to, to let the judicial proceedings play out. And uh, see what he wants to do. And see what he wants to do. You know, there, there, there may be an opportunity where, uh, if so, as some have suggested in the past, that, that Senator uh, Smith wants to, to take control of the situation and not put it in the hands of other people. 
Uh, and so the last I heard, I believe he is up for arraignment on July 9th mm -hmm. uh, or July 11th, one of the two. But the decision was made today that he'd be bound over for trial mm -hmm. uh, with, within the, the court system. So that's, that's where we're at right now. Yeah, it's, it's a shame. I mean, it's you know, just something that... It is, and, and, and the, the senator acknowledges that um, it was it was a, a big mistake on his part. Yeah, um, and could have been so, a lot worse too. I could think. have been a lot worse. Yeah, nobody yeah. was actually hurt. Right, right. Uh, so you know, for what it's worth, I mean, Senator, senator Smith. Prior to this incident, I, I've known Senator Smith to be a good guy. Mm -hmm. He he's an an honest guy. Um, he's a fun guy. I mean, he's got a great personality, great sense of humor. But there's no question he made a mistake here, and yeah. so you know there there needs to be uh, action and conversations around that. And, and I just hope that at the end of the day he gets you know the the help that he needs, yeah. uh, and, and he he ends up where where he needs to be. Okay. So so that that's that's my hope for him. Okay, all right. Uh, last week you weren't with us. Uh, we had discussed um, uh, the world's oldest person uh, passed away. You knew. Uh, Geraldine Talley. Geraldine Talley. Yeah. Right? 116. 116 you had the opportunity of meeting her. Yeah, hung out a couple of times with her. Uh, great lady. Great lady. You'd ask her how she made it to 100. At the time, it was 115. How'd you make it to 115? Yeah. She'd just look up to the sky and point her fingers up, you know. Yeah. God, that was it. Yeah, that's what Richard, I think, said. It wasn't, yeah. uh, you know, I smoked a pack a day or, you know. A little shot of brandy or, every yeah. night or whatever. No, no, no. <laughs> no, yeah. Miss, it, it, faith it, was really, had a lot to do with it. It did, and uh, Miss Talley was a great lady. Uh, and my God, 116 years old, born in 1899. Can you imagine? That, that statistic always gets me. The other one is I think of when World War II ended. She was 46 years old. That's so, crazy. so, so not too far off from where and you know, all, 20 years up or 20 years down. All the changes that she's seen over her life. Everything. My everything. God. I mean, I told you know we were talking last week, Richard and I, and, and her husband died in 1988, and he was 95. Mm -hmm. So a lot of longevity there. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. But uh, yeah, God bless her. God rest her soul. She's a good lady, yeah. uh, and reflected great credit upon the community and the right. city of Inkster. So we're gonna miss her. We're and, gonna miss her. And speaking of the city of Inkster, uh, any more? Uh, have you been to a council meeting or anything? Lately, since I haven't been to a council meeting yet, uh, plan on attending one here in uh, the near future. That should um, be interesting. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I stand by what I said. Oh well, I, I stand and by I what stand I said. by you and what you said. I, it's you a know shame. The, the thing. The thing that I was mistaken on, and I put this out there for everybody to oh, read. The insurance. Yeah, you know, I had I had read in the newspapers that if the settlement had been higher, residents would have had to pay, mm -hmm. and uh, that really upset me. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, come to find out later that that wasn't the case, that the residents were going to have to pay no matter what. Uh, and that really so, upset you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so you know, I, I admitted that, and I said, you know, if, if I'm going to make a mistake while defending my residents, I'm comfortable making a mistake while defending folks. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if I make a mistake screwing up, that's another story. But So now they have another, a second judgment assessed on top of the Well, case. so Insta residents have three judgments right now. Three now. Plus, well, we're not done. Plus the judgment from Wayne County that's coming. Plus yeah. the 6.45 mils that's coming from the one case. We all got that. Plus, County. yeah. <laughs> plus 4.5 mils, or pardon me, 0.45 mils for the second case. Now, mind you, the Floyd Dent case that, that resulted in the 6.45 yeah. mils, the officer yeah. that beat him. Right. Two weeks later, the city is getting assessed a different assessment for a different beating from the same eight. cop. Yeah. Same one. Same yeah. cop from yeah. years prior. So, uh, you know, it's just, you know, like I said, I, 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 stand by, I stand by every single word that I said. Everything that I've done to help the city of Inkster has been thwarted or cast aside or ignored or turned away by the Inkster city officials. And, you know, no one is a perfect official. I'm not a perfect senator. No. The commissioner is not a perfect commissioner, contrary to what he might say. What Mayors, did that happen? See? <laughs> we're not perfect. No, and, and I don't think people expect us to be perfect. No, no. But, but they're, the, the, the inaction, uh, the lack of concern, the lack of regard, the lack of caring, and here's the it's thing: unprecedented. The the residents put them people in there. The residents got to take them out. I mean, come on. Well, yeah, absolutely. they need to clean house. Absolutely. If they're not happy with who they got in there, then they need to and, get somebody and, to run 
and put somebody in there. And, and well, we know that's going to happen this year because we know that we're going to get a new mayor come November. It's going to be a gentleman named Byron Nolan. Okay. Byron is the gentleman who sued the city of Inkster over the water rates and won two and a half million dollars for oh. all the residents. So he's got the money to run, that's for sure. No, no, no. <laughs> he the two and a half million dollars he won was okay. divided amongst all the city residents. Awesome. And so, no wonder they're so, making him mayor. Yeah. So he made you know his lawyers cut, but yeah, yeah. Uh, By Byron is going to win. He's he is has one opponent, but he is going to win. Okay. Uh, and we're going to have at least two new city council members. Uh, maybe more. Who knows? Uh, and Marsh is going to stay in there? Marsh has a hearing on June 29th. There's a special city council meeting being held to assess the city manager's performance. I don't know what that means. Yeah, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. Yeah, you do. I, I mean, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I think I do, but, yeah. but I'm not in a place to say it. I think it means that they're going to assess whether he's doing a good job, and if he's not doing a good job in their opinion, he's going to go. Okay. Yes, significant people. Well, they all need to look at their self. Hmm. The question is, do they have a majority? Sure. Well, so there you have it. Yeah. And I've said time and time again, the commissioner knows I believe this with my whole heart. The residents in Inkster are phenomenal, even the ones that put the wrong people in the office. Yeah. The residents in Inkster are awesome. They are getting thwarted at every turn by a city leadership that doesn't care. Or doesn't know any better. Well, they should be so irate and so wanting to get involved oh, in their community you. now that this should be the what stick that broke the camel's back. Right I hope here. so. I hope so. It, it and, really and should. And if they're listening, I hope they do get involved. The, the folks, the folks that Wake I talk up. to, folks that I talk to in the city, uh, the, the feedback has been very positive. You know, the number one thing that I heard after I after I sort of blasted the, the city officials mm -hmm. was that uh, one. Finally, we've got someone from Lansing saying what we've been trying to say for so long now. And then, two, when the mayor responded to me and, you know, it didn't have many nice things to say, that made the residents angrier. Yeah. Because after they wanted years. You to apologize, wasn't it? After, yes, and I'm not apologizing. No. After years of reaching out for answers and follow up and questions, it took a state senator bruising a couple egos to finally get a response. Yeah, pretty And so much. that upset the residents even more, that, that you care more about this guy crushing and, your ego than you do about us live there. Yeah. and our questions and concerns. Or, and represent them. So, wow. you know, Byron has my full support. I'm endorsing him. I'm supporting him. Awesome. Uh, and, and I hope that come next year. What's his name again? Byron Nolan, B-Y-R-O-N. B-Y-R-O-N. Yep, N-O-L-E-N, -E Nolan. N-O-L-E-N. Yep, could yeah, be a good guest for you. We're both endorsing. There you okay. go. The commissioner will. could be a good guest for the show, and yeah. I'll bet you he'll follow up quicker than the mayor ever did. Okay, I will definitely. Is Mark, uh, is Mark in the chat room? Mark? No, Mark no. isn't. No. <laughs> he listens though Mark later. He, he listens. About the current situation. What's that? You would ask Mark what he thinks about the current communication situation. Oh, I can imagine. I can imagine. Oh, Donnie, do you remember when Mark was trying to yeah. get a response from? One of the elected officials yeah. from Inkster. Oh, yeah, no. he was livid. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if he ever heard from him yet. Yeah. Yeah, so, but I know Mark listens uh, later on. He downloads the show and listens to it, so. All right, so what else you got, Senator? Anything else for us you want to share? You know, the usual, the usual. Uh, we'll be back uh, in the Capitol next week working on uh, the roads issue right now. Oh, yeah, where are we standing there? You know, the, House, want to know. the House sent over their plan. It's not a good plan. It's a, real, it's a non starter for a lot of us. Uh, and so the question is going to be um, are the Republicans in the majority willing to come to the table and work together with Democrats to pass a better package? Or are they going to tell us to buzz off and try and find the votes <laughs> that they need to pass what they've got done? And, and here's the thing they're going in summer recess. The You're Senate, gonna. The Senate is not. Is not. Right. So, I mean, what's gonna happen there? Well, the House. Can you are, guys come up with your own? The House sent us their plan, and, and my belief is that the Senate is gonna come up with their own. Yeah. And so, I they're gonna come so. with their own plan, send it back to the House, mm -hmm. uh, and then the House will, uh, do whatever they wanna do with it. Yeah. Maybe a conference committee. Who knows? So. That Usual. plan, that plan B isn't moving very quickly, is it? I'll, I'll say two last things. Yeah. That was my biggest fear. 
Two last things. I plan on being at uh, Lucky Squirrel tomorrow, so I hope folks come out to that. Yeah, and I hope Topper Com can hold the rain off. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. The second thing, and I'm, I'm in a place now where I feel comfortable to uh, share it and announce it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've been working to try and get uh, more folks to Lansing. Mm-hmm. I want folks to be able to see what it is that we do in the whole nine yards. Yep. Uh, and so I sent you the graphic earlier today. We're putting together something called, it's going to sound so funny, <laughs> Senator Knizik's Lansing Adventure. I love it. I saw the T-shirts. I love it. And so the, prototype. Bill and Ted. the goal the goal is, and, and I don't know what the full, because this, this is still stewing in my brain. Yeah. There's going to, it's going to be a cost associated with it for residents. Right, right. What I'd like to do, I think, long term, is to go out and to fundraise from educational groups to be able to bring kids for free to Lansing. But for right now, uh, the plan that we're putting together is going to be a Saturday uh, in probably August. Probably August. Yeah. Not uh, the last two weeks, though. No. <laughs> Residents uh, in Sorry. Garden City, it's going to be $40. For that, and, and I've been asking around, asking, you know, does, is, is $40 too much? And someone shared with me that the senior center just did a thing, or is doing a thing, $80 a person. To pick you up in a bus, take you to Big Boy, and then take you to the fireworks at yeah. Greenfield Village. So that's 80 bucks. So yeah. let me tell you what the 40 bucks is going to get you. I think that's reasonable, very reasonable. $40 gets you here one of a kind, custom made, Senator Kinesic Lansing Adventure t shirt. T shirt. T shirts. Made by Garden State's own Debbie Wiesner. Yeah. You are my art. Yep. Custom t shirt. A uh, Trinity bus ride to and from Lansing. So it's not a school bus. It's the condition, comfortable, movie, yeah. the whole nine. Yeah, bathroom, toilet. Bus ride to uh, Lansing for 56 participants. 56. Okay. okay. Um, currently, it's a self-guided tour through the Michigan Historical Museum. I'm trying to work on getting a docent. Self-guided through Michigan Historical Museum. Lunch from the Grand Traverse Pie Company, Sweet. and then a personal tour from me of the Capitol Building and and the whole nine yards. And autographs, pictures, everything. There, I, like. there will be pictures. Lots everybody, of pictures. Everybody, every, we all want a picture. Well, everybody can take their pictures, but I'm going to have a yeah. professional uh, there oh, cool. to take personal pictures to then send to residents after Sweet. the fact. Sweet, I like it. Yeah. So, so, so where do me and Mike sign up? <laughs> Brother, we're still working on it. We're still working on it. You know, well, be sure to you know send that info to us. When, when we, we get, get the yeah, yeah, when we get the information, we're going to give it to the folks that we know are our leaders in the community. We'll send it to it the uh, uh, Facebook, everything. Yep, Facebook. send it to the uh, uh, the, the newspaper because the, the reality is. 56 people, I need all 56 spots filled. I don't think you're going to have much trouble filling that. I don't think so. I don't either. I don't think so. And, just, and so just the seniors alone, I can see it. Yeah. Really. Yeah. I mean. So we thought we thought it would be a good time. And so, okay. like I said, that and, and I'm not making any money off of this. You know, we sat there. We calculated. Just a good time. You know, to it's, it's a almost $1,000 for the bus Let's divided. See our government food. at work. That's right. That's right. So, and the good thing, too, about being on a Saturday uh, it won't be so crazy and hectic that you don't get to go do anything or see anything. Yeah, you won't get too rushed. Or so, so I'll be able to actually bring people onto the Senate floor, and they can do the whole nine, stand up there, hold the gavel, and and actually, oh, cool. I, I think it'll be a fun experience for folks. Yeah, and, and again, oh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so we're we're finalizing it right now and um, looking to to have some information out there soon, so we can do a, uh, our first inaugural trip in August. Yeah, the Michigan Museum is awesome. Yes, sir. All right. I like it. I like it. Richard, any comments on that? You going to go? <laughs> he he pays $80. It's double for him. Double for the commercial. I would pay $100 for that trip. <laughs> hey. fact, I'll be like that guy on the commercial that's bidding on someone else's groceries in the grocery line. I'll, I'll pay 102 hey, hey, listen. The price of the T-shirt is alone. It's a it's a it's a collector's item. And this is probably going into the Michigan Historical Museum. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I, he'll be autographing T-shirts just like you autographed Mr. October. There you have. See, there you well, have. I don't know if it'll be quite the same. No. <laughs> Bring your sharpies. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anything else from you, gentlemen? Anything from the good from for the me? I got one more event tonight, man. You do? What do you got? Got to go up to Southfield for a meeting with uh, State Representative Jeremy Moss. Wow. Yeah. Just to meet and chew the. Yeah, pack. yeah. Well, we got a bill that we're working on together right now, and our schedule has just been so busy the last week that, unfortunately, we have to get together for a. Do you want to share that bill with us here tonight or no? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. We'll All get right. there. Okay. 
<laughs> Just remember, you're the upper chamber. He buys. That means, yeah, I'm the boss. <laughs> I'm That's the boss. right. That's right. Yeah, Richard knows about that, all the lunches you've had lately. Jeez, oh, Pete. Boss, what are you talking Come about? Come on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that part of our legacy cost? <laughs> yeah, legacy cost. All right, well, thank you Pretty very much, know. Senator. I appreciate it. That's what I'm here for. I don't want to keep you if you have to go. You can, you know where the door is. Oh, yeah. And uh, don't forget your cherry ice cream is in the freezer. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Those are, that was so good. <laughs> and no, I did not have any. Hey, why not? No, I didn't. No, I said, nah, I'm not going to eat the Senator's ice cream. <laughs> that's all right. You could have a little bit. <laughs> I know. All right, thank you, sir. Okay, Brenda. Right. I'm going to check out, too, unless you got more for me. No, I think that's it, unless you have anything. You good? All right. Well, hey. I'll have more next week. Have a safe trip, right. and uh, we'll see you. See you later. Bye-bye. All right, bye. Thanks. Okay, Brenda's Habitat is now, Brenda's Butterfly Habitat is now open and doing great, located at Barson's Greenhouse, 6414 we Merriman Road. What's that? We were over there Saturday. Did you go over there? Yeah. Very cool, isn't it? Yeah. Very nice. The kids That's love your granddaughter. it. granddaughter. Kids love it. Uh, it's at Barson's Greenhouse, 6414 Merriman Road. Uh, for the 2015 season, uh, she's open now through September 5th, Thursday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It will be closed if it's raining. It's a great place to hang out with the kids or grandkids or just by yourself. It's all free, but donations are accepted. Check it out. You won't be sorry. And the GCBA is accepting new members. Any business owner interested in becoming a member of the GCBA, Garden City Business Alliance, Please visit their website at gcbiz, that's B-I-Z, 48135.org, or go to their Facebook page at facebook.com slash Garden City Business Alliance, where you'll find all the information you'll need to become a member. And if you would like to talk to someone, please call 734-788-9319. The GCBA meets on the second Friday of the month, and their next meeting is on July the 10th, 9 a.m. at the Straight Farmhouse in the Grand Parlor. And that's located at 6221 Merriman Road. Bring your ideas and some business cards because networking is what it's all about. The GCBA is talking about some great events planned in the future for the community, so why not join and be a part of it now? All right. Okay, with some more announcements, here's Mike. Thanks, Gary. All right. Uh, first of all, did you know that the Garden City Public Library offers drop-in computer tutoring every Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Do you need to brush up on the basics? Come in and take advantage of the great resource, of this great resource. The library is located at 31735 Maplewood Street in Garden City. For more information, call 734-793-1830. Mark your calendar for the Lucky Squirrel Flea Market event. This Saturday, 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 uh, June 27th. Much, much bigger than last year. Arts, crafts, vintage goods, auto parts, jewelry, glassware, books, and so much more. You have to come see it for yourself. 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., 5805 Central Avenue, the Farmer's Market Lot, Ford Middle Belt, Northeast Corner. <laughs> for every test drive of a new Ford vehicle... North Brother Ford and the Ford Motor Company will donate up to $25 to the Garden City Rotary Club. The date is this Saturday. The time is from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Where the Garden City at the Garden City Lucky Squirrel Festival, located at the Garden City Farmers Market, Ford Middle Belt. So, what you're over there for the other activities? You can do a test drive on a Ford vehicle, and uh, that'll benefit a fine. Civic Organization, the Garden City Rotary. Right. The Veterans Pinning Ceremony, which was to be held on Wednesday, July 1st at Maplewood, has been canceled, or maybe postponed is a better term. They're looking to reschedule possibly in November. Sorry for any convenience, inconvenience, and we will <laughs> keep you posted. As of June 23rd, the Garden City Public Library is pleased to announce that the annual summer reading program will be chock full of fun-filled events mm -hmm. for youth from birth to 12, teens from 13 to 19, and adults 20 to 120. Hey, that even includes me. <laughs> <laughs> for the 215 summertime <laughs> session, 
It was developed to promote a love of books, encourage summer reading, and help maintain reading skills through goal-based reading logs and exciting weekly programs. This year's theme is superheroes and the extraordinary things that they do. If they weren't extraordinary, they wouldn't be superheroes, would they? The library has stocked up on superhero and comic book themed books to prepare for the coming event. For more information, contact the Garden City Public Library at 734-793-1830. Library hours are Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., Friday to Saturday, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m., located at 31735 Maplewood Street, Garden City, Michigan. And, of course, the big news, I guess, in Garden City this week is that the school board has selected a new superintendent. Yeah. He is Derek Derek Fisher, Fisher. who is currently the principal at Garden City High School. From what I hear, everybody's really thrilled about that choice. Yeah, hopefully he's going to. It's kind of a no-brainer, really, wasn't it, I think? You know, I think it was similar to us picking Chief Murray for the city manager. I agree. He got somebody who knows the constituents yep. better than probably anybody from outside could ever do. Yep. And hopefully he'll have the communication skills and the rapport to be able to bring all the interested parties to the table. Well, that, that's the thing. Progress. We'll have to see how he gets along with the board, the union, and, and all that. Exactly. You know, so and hopefully and it'll all work out. And the parents, right. Exactly. That's all I have, Kerry. All right. Sounds good. A lot going on. Let's hope that rain holds off tomorrow. Uh, Saturday. I mean Saturday. Yeah. yeah, I'm a day late and dollar short. Yeah. <laughs> also on Saturday, don't forget the Straight Farmhouse. Uh, I believe. Let's see. No, not this Saturday. I'm sorry. They're the second and third Saturday of the month. So their next one will be July 11th. July 11th. Right. June 20th. They just had one. Day so my uh, birthday. Yep. That's at the Straight Farmhouse Historical Museum. Uh, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., sign-up begins at 8 a.m., only $15 for a 10 by 10 space. Monies from the space uh, rental goes directly to the museum, payable on the day of the flea market. Uh, the flea market is uh, located at 6221 Merriman Road. That's on Merriman between Ford and Warren, so you want to head on out there July. Uh, the American Legion Post 396 is having um, a golf outing. August 15th at Warren Valley Golf Course. It's a shotgun start at 9 a.m. $100 per golfer, 18-hole uh, scramble uh, golf, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, uh, raffle, and much more. $15,000 hole in one, Mike. I know. I'm trying to get them to, <laughs> to change the rules to include holes in 15, but they haven't done so yet. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. I don't know if even, I can do it even in a, 15. Even a buck, come on. <laughs> yeah, there you go. How about closest to the hole, man? <laughs> uh, 15 shots? This is a good deal, uh, d- uh, Senator. Proceeds benefiting Stiggy's Dogs. My favorite. And the Home Food Pantry, another favorite. So uh, please register by August 5th by calling Dick King, 734-564-7080, or Paul at 734-776-8025. And I believe that's all I have. What do we got here? Uh, did we go? Oh, you know what? We didn't. Yeah. You're right. Thanks for reminding me. I got to do gardening in two minutes. Uh-oh. My gosh, Joey and Holly would kill me. Let's get them in here real quick, and then we'll uh, call it a podcast. podcast. Podcast, podcast. Here's Joey and Holly. Sorry. This is Gardening in Two Minutes. One of the problems that many people face in their garden is trying to grow viney crops such as watermelon and pumpkins and squash. These crops require a lot of water and they also require some space. But there are some things you can do to make it easier to grow them. You don't even need to have a garden. You can simply take a bag of potting soil or compost and plant directly into it being sure you put your holes in the side of it for adequate drainage, and you can allow those crops to vine across your yard and not have to till any soil at all. You can also, for some of the smaller ones, you can make a trellis, and you can have these squash grow up the trellis so that they can support them. 
problems that you may face will be powdery mildew. And there's a number of wonderful resources online on how to prevent it or greatly reduce the effects of it. Powdery mildew is that white whitewash uh, effect that the leaves uh, appear to have that prevents the plant from absorbing the sunlight and eventually will kill the plant off. One thing you can do is you can find home remedies for it. In the past, we used milk, you can use mouthwash, you can even fight it with vinegar. So when it comes to viney crops, you also want to uh, realize the size of the area that you're needing. Some of these can take 10 to 40 square feet to grow successfully. Watermelon takes a lot of water, as we've spoke about, and it wants a lot of heat. So be sure you put these plants in places where they can get a lot of uh, sunlight. Most of these plants will take between 85 and 115 to 120 days to reach maturity. If you're in a climate where the season is much shorter than that, you can start these uh, four weeks before you actually put them in the ground. For many of us, that may be too late at this time of year. For more information on growing viney crops such as watermelon and pumpkin, our weekly video productions, as well as our free downloadable digital quarterly magazine, you can find all that information at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. Dot com. For the health conscious organic gardener worldwide. For gardening in two minutes, I'm Joy Baird. And I'm Holly Baird. All right. Thank you, guys. I almost forgot about you. Thank you, Mike, for reminding me about that. That would have been a disaster. Disaster. Yeah. People we, look forward to that segment. We, and we'd promised. I mean, you know. Always, always promise. All right. Well, thank you. Well, hey, I think uh, we're ready to call this a podcast, podcast, yes, podcast, podcast, podcast. Oh, by the way, I gave the senator three Saturday dates to to consider for his tour. Oh, okay. Those are the. It can't be one. the last two Saturdays of August. Well, the first and the third, the Tigers are on the road. Those would be good choices. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Maybe we can talk them into it. All right, I want to thank Senator Kanisek for stopping by. It's always a pleasure to have him on and see what's new with him and the state. He's a really good guy. Also, thanks to my co-host, Richard, who was calling in tonight. Uh, Tom and Mike, uh, great job as always. Appreciate it. Welcome, Gary. And always thanks to uh, Holly and Joey, all the way from uh, Wisconsin, for your gardening tips. We appreciate that. And thank you to everyone who hung out with us in the chat room and to those that uh, will be watching us later on our YouTube channel. We really appreciate your support every week. Remember, the uh, audio from tonight's show will be made available on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash gcchat shortly after we sign off tonight. And uh, look for the video of tonight's show sometime tomorrow on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash community chat show. Okay, remember, the success of a community depends on the community, so please support your local businesses. And if you see something, say something. Look out for one another out there. For all your weather needs and information, head on over to DopperTomsWeather.com. Uh, he's got a great little website over there. So join us next week right here on TalkShoe.com, show ID 82757, when we'll be live with another episode of GC Community Chat. So on behalf of Richard, Tom, Mike, Holly, and Joey, this is Kerry. Take care and see you next time. Good night. Good night. All right, another great show in the can. See you, everybody. Bye. Thanks for joining us.